Okay, now we're ready for the candidates that are here. You have one minute. So, come on up here and line up. I don't know who's got the stopwatch. I think the parliamentarian is good at time. Oh, good. Sure. Hi, thank you for listening for us tonight. I want to especially thank everybody who's here, especially all of the wonderful Republican women in the red tonight. Thank you for all the opportunities we take all of the candidates to speak in so many forums in the past couple of weeks and so many coming up. Thanks. My name is Colleen Quartz Rice. I grew up in Beaumont, Texas. I'm a conservative Christian, and I'm running for the 9th District Court of Appeals. I've been an attorney, licensed to practice law since 1996. My husband and I have practiced together here in Montgomery County at Rice, Rice, and Rice, PC, and we've also been raising our four children here in the county. I have uh, spent the last two and a half years working for Judge Claudia Laird in County Court at Law Number 2. Not only do I have trial experience and appellate experience, but I've also now got court administration experience and have loved serving the public. <clears throat> it's something I want to continue to do, and I felt called and, um, and kind of pushed by God to put my hat in the ring for this opportunity to serve as the Chief Justice of the Court of Appeals, which meets in Belmont. So one of the things that sets me apart from the other candidates is my court administration experience. Our court is, has been recognized as a, a, a uh, court with probate experience and guardianship administration, That's and we're receiving an uh, award in a couple of weeks. So thanks for your consideration. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chair, Montgomery County Republicans, it's an honor to be here seeking the nomination for the new 457 District Court. My name is Vince Santini, and I just want to say what an honor it is to be in a room where people stand up and pray together. That is the loudest pledge I've heard in a long time. So thanks for that. I take that very seriously. I'm looking forward, forward to serving y'all. I want to serve everyone in this room. And I want to say, if you want to hear more about me, I can't tell everything in a minute. But February 6th, this Thursday at 6 p.m., the Lake Conroe Area Republican Women is hosting a forum, as did a lot of the other, actually every single um, women's group. So thank you all very much. I see Ms. Melanson, Ms. Maggio, Julie, um, uh, Kim, I see Lane, I see everyone, um, I see Carolyn, I see Sylvia, thank you all so much for what you do serving our community, Ms. Woodall, and um, thank you precinct chairs for uh, getting the word out for the Republican Party. God bless y'all. My name is Billy Graff, I'm running for County Commissioner, Precinct Number 1, and it is a privilege to be here. It's an honor to address this fantastic crowd. This is definitely the best crowd I've seen in a year, and I'm very grateful that everyone is here because when we do the business of the Republican Party, we need to all do the business together because it's important, it matters, and we are the hope of this state. So thank you all for coming. Um, I'm a Marine, and I fight like a Marine, and I will fight for this county. I'm a husband. And I love my wife, and I will love this county not the same way, but I do love this county. It was going to go a certain way, and I said I better not. So uh, uh, I think it's very important as we look out to what we can do. We use the word servant a lot. We use the word leader a lot. We rarely put them together. I want to be the servant leader that helps lead this county from that chair right there to integrity, honor, and transparency. And I would appreciate your vote on March the 3rd for County Commissioner Precinct 1. Thank you. Good evening. My name is James. I'm here for Kevin Brady. Uh, we appreciate y'all having us tonight. So Kevin Brady was actually in Iowa yesterday. So he got to witness the Democrat mess firsthand. Um, he was there because President Trump personally asked him to go and speak as a surrogate which was a great honor that he accepted very humbly. Uh, so we're running on a few things. Uh, obviously, you know, us, or Kevin Brady, writing the tax cut bill and getting it passed. Um, and hopefully we can get the majority back and he can write again 
the repeal Obamacare bill. So we can get that passed as well. John McCain will talk about that. And uh, a lot of other things. You know, the, the Social Security WP loophole elimination. He wants to stop that windfall elimination so that our teachers and our first responders get their Social Security. And then also tax cuts 2.0 and uh, lower prescription drug costs for all our seniors. Thank you. Uh, I am looking at all of the doers in the Montgomery County Republican Party for the last number of years, okay? And we all candidates, there's five of us. I'm Jay Wright, and I'm running also for the uh, Chief Justice spot on the Court of Appeals. It's being uh, vacated by uh, the Chief Justice. He's retiring. And I put my hat in the ring uh, because I've got 34 years' experience uh, as a, a trial lawyer doing uh, criminal criminal cases, first prosecuting, then defense, doing civil business litigation, <laughs> defending and prosecuting, doing family law cases, custody cases, divorce cases, doing and doing probate cases, probate trials, things along those lines. And so when I look at what the Court of Appeals handles, it's appeals on all of those kinds of cases. And I've done over 117 appellate cases. Uh, where I've been both both sides of the appeals and written those briefs. I've done over 140 jury trials and of all kinds and every nature. And so that's why I thought, well, I think I can help out on the court. So I appreciate your support. Thank you for hearing me. Howdy, guys. Thank you so much uh, for coming out. I'm Kirk Osborne. I'm running against Kevin Brady for U.S. House. On, on March the 4th, we're all on the same team. So James, you and I are on the same team on March the 4th. But in the meantime, let me just say that for me, this race isn't about Kevin Brady. It's certainly not about Kirk Osborne. And honestly, guys, I think it's about something that you all treasure more than anything else. And it's, it's actually not about you and me here in this room. It's about your kids. It's about your grandkids. I'm a father of three, been married to the same woman for 23 years. She's blessed me with two sons and a daughter. And my youngest is, well, she turns eight tomorrow. So the princess finally showed up. And uh, what a life changer that is. But, but I, I want to share something with you. Um, my wife is originally from Argentina. She's a proud U.S. citizen. And if you ask her, what is the way to jeopardize this country? What's the way to lose America? She'll tell you there's two things. One is to leave the border open. Sorry. And the other is to keep spending money and spending it. Guys, I did invite you to take a look at Kirk Osborne for Congress.com. See what I'm actually about. And take a look at the voting records of the guys that you have in Congress right now. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm John Nix, currently running for precinct chair 21. Sorry, I have a bad back, bad leg. Currently, currently running for precinct chair number 21. I'm very active in my precinct. I'm the only one here right now. My precinct chair isn't here. He barely, rarely comes to these meetings, and my opponent isn't here either. I've never seen him ever before. So I'm asking for you. You know, if you live at 21, I'm your person you want to have. I attend the meeting. I attended the state convention, you know, a delegate. I was there from day one all the way to the last gravel when it dismissed. You know, I need help lock rocking as well. You can help me with that. But I'm 21. I'm on the other side of 45. I have a Target Best Buy. I have a Walmart and the HEB and the Burns Country Catfish. Go all the way out towards the Sanchez Center. River 105 and that 23 Park. So if you want to help, doesn't could you stop again? I'm John and X for Precinct Chair number 21. And God bless Texas. Hello, I'm Joshua Treadway. I'm also running for precinct chairman. Oh. Um, I'm a lifelong Montgomery County citizen. Started my career here about 15 years ago after college where I studied political science. Something I've always been interested in. So, you know, I really just want a chance to uh, get involved and stay involved and help keep this county that we all love red. So, vote for me please. Joshua Treadway. Well, thank you guys for being here. You guys are truly the ones that make all this happen. Um, 
very, very good to see a lot of excitement and people interested in the party. My name is John Duche. I'm running for uh, Republican Party County Chair. And I would just like to take the rest of my time to say, Dr. Wilkerson, 55 years. Um, I believe this is the last meeting you're going to be presiding over. So thank you. One more. Thank you for all your service, sir. <laughs> okay. Republican Women Club, three minutes each. No, I'm doing it wrong. Okay. Hey, <laughs> 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 no, I'm not doing 21 minutes. I'm doing 21 minutes. No, I could. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hi, and that consensus that I would do the speaking and speak in generalities. So, hi, I'm Alice Malasa, and I'm a member of the Montgomery County Republican Women's Club, and I'm also Vice President of Programs of the Texas Federation of Republican Women, an organization with over 11,000 members. <laughs> a few weeks ago, someone challenged me to tell what Republican Women's Clubs do. And I'm here to answer that question. I know I can't name everything we do, but this will give you an idea. The first Republican Women's Club was started in Montgomery County over 40 years ago. And now there are seven Republican Women's Clubs in Montgomery County. Imagine 40 years of hard work for the Republican Party in this county. So what exactly do we do? We work to get Republicans elected. Yes, we block walk, we make phone calls, we register voters, and we work the polls on election day as election judges and clerks. We stand in the parking lot with the candidates in the general elections and give them the extra support they need. We hold monthly meetings and have speakers who discuss the issues facing our country our state, our county, and our political party. We discuss election laws and volunteer for senatorial and state Republican Party committees. We develop and implement plans of action to lobby our local, state, and national elected officials on important issues. The Republican Women's Clubs contribute monetarily to our Republican candidates' campaigns. Republican primary candidates are invited to speak and participate in forums sponsored by our clubs. And all Republican candidates and elected officials are welcomed at any of our monthly meetings. We work at our Montgomery County Republican Party headquarters by answering the phone and greeting visitors. And yes, that was probably a Republican woman you saw cleaning the bathroom at headquarters. <laughs> That's true, Dorothy. You can swear to that. <laughs> we have helped plan fundraisers for the Montgomery County Republican Party on many occasions. We've also helped the party host numerous Reagan, Lincoln Reagan dinners over the years. It is a Republican woman who has served you when you attended a munch and mingle before a county executive committee meeting. And it was a Republican woman who stayed behind to clean up while you attended that county executive committee meeting. We care for our military by making care packages for those serving overseas and by volunteering at the Veterans Clinic in Congress. We donate to such worthy causes which support veterans such as Camp Hope and Fisher House. We all have very active literacy programs and donate books and dictionaries to local schools and libraries. We provide scholarships to young women, women entering college. We are at the local schools teaching about Americanism, holding essay contests, and giving out scholarships. We help form and support high school Republican groups. And some Republican women volunteer by teaching citizenship classes. 
Republican Women's Clubs provide service to our community by assisting the Women's Shelter, the Rainbow Room, the Food Bank, the Salvation Army, and other such vital organizations. So ladies and gentlemen, you ask, what do Republican women do for our party? The answer is, we do more than just meet for lunch. Amen. 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 with a smile on our faces and without complaint because we care for our county party and our Republican candidates and elected officials. And all we ask for in return is a little bit of appreciation, respect, and support. As I call your club's name, I ask that the members of that club please stand. And I know not many of us can be here tonight because after all, our president is speaking and we want to hear him. Montgomery County Republican women, please stand. women's clubs in Montgomery County and added to that list are a great number of men who have become associate members of our clubs. Yes, yes. The ladies of these clubs have donated well over 40,000 hours to our party and our community during the past year. If we multiply that by the Texas minimum wage which is just over seven dollars an hour they have contributed well over $300,000 to this party and community. Thank you ladies for all you do. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to represent the wonderful ladies in our 7th Montgomery County Republican Women's Clubs. And I hope that answers the question, just what do Republican women do? Thank you, Alex. Many of you probably know that the person who led the beginning of the Republican women's movement in this county in 1979 recently passed away. Of Lydia Gromulitis, a wonderful lady. And I have to say this, I was at the funeral, and when I looked over across the way, just to see who all was there, I recognized a gentleman that I knew very well. Those of you that don't know Lydia, she was a great, great patriot. She had little business cards printed telling about how wonderful America is. And she was known for passing those out. So someone had to print them. And then that gentleman sitting across the way from me was a printer who she hired to print the cards. And I thought that was a great, great honor uh, for her to have, to have that gentleman there. Linda, we appreciate what you did. And thank you, Alice, for a great report. Really, you can't really describe how much Republican women mean to the Republican Party in Montgomery County, in the state of Texas, and in the country. They are devoted to, to producing victories for our party, and we can't thank you enough for all that you do. Thank you. Treasurer's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Since the golf tournament concluded on October 14th and those finances were included in our last meeting on December 3rd, not much has changed other than the important reoccurring $20.20 .20 monthly contributions from 
16 contributors, which is located on the back of the finance report. It's actually 17. If you count the two times a month that Township Director Shelley Scuba Gibbs is giving. Uh, don't tell her though. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all of y'all. That state giving is almost $350 a month. Our cash asset position has improved $459 from the last meeting from approximately $29,975 to $30,434. This reflects the amount captured in Google Sheets, which not only does our esteemed financial review chair, Mark Frank, have real-time access to, but so do members of the steering committee. This $30,434 is also the bank balance in our Pioneer bank account. Not to inundate you with numbers, but subtracting out the $1,982 raised by the end of 2018, means we raised, netted, just over 28000 last year. Thanks go, out to, <laughs> thanks go out to many of you, including um, that helped out with the golf tournament, elected reps like Senator Crichton, Representative Toth, Judge Keogh, and many others. They realize the urgency that we face as we head into November. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have the uh, people who are here tonight who are the sustaining monthly donors uh, stand and we can recognize them. Hi, Paul. Stand up there, buddy. Right. It's already seen before. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for the John, how much money of the monies that you've raised has gone to support the Montgomery County headquarters? Uh, Mr. Prater, you asked that, I believe, or Scott Baker did at the last meeting. That would be a steering committee function that would have to be raised at the next steering committee meeting. So to answer your question, none. Here's the RDC report. Hello. We had our SREC committee meeting this last weekend. Um, we had some very good reports. A lot of money has been raised. In fact, more has been raised in 2019 than any of the previous years since 2011. And they also said that, if, I think it's 3.3 million. And if you took out all the major donors, even the grassroots alone is more than was ever raised in all of those previous years. So we're, we're on a good track there. RNC, yes, thank you. RNC committeeman Robin Armstrong reported that in Florida, for every two Republicans they registered, only one Democrat has been registered. <laughs> so great, job, great work there, and, and I want to encourage everybody to get registered as a VDR, all of you, everybody. Um, we can get out and register people. The deadline ended Monday for this election in March, but we are working towards November, and that is the goal of RPT. Yeah. To identify conservative voters and to register them. Um, then I wanted to report the convention dates. Um, March 3rd is, of course, election day. I think everybody does that. Um, March 21st, and we, we encourage you to go to your precinct convention, which will be determined tonight when that's going to be. On March 21st are the SD3 and SD4 conventions. SD4 is going to be um, Saturday, March 21st, uh, beginning at, I'm sorry, I don't know if we firmed up the time. It's going to be in the morning though, 9 or 10. I believe it's going to be at 10 a.m. And then, uh, don't know about SD3, if they want to report, they can. And then um, May 14th through the 16th is the RBT convention in Houston. At the Marriott Marquis is the the main hotel, and it's going to be the convention center. And it begins Thursday, that Thursday, the 14th at 9 a.m. And then the committees begin on the 11th on Monday, so they'll be running all that week. If anybody wants to go down there to testify, uh, something very exciting that's going to happen this year. And some of you may have heard we're going to have electronic voting machines. I'm very excited because Montgomery County's always been behind counting their votes and making us late. <laughs> 
So we're all going to have those, and they're all going to be completely um, loaded with the weighted figures to, to do the weighted averages and, and to, to uh, figure out how many, how much the votes count. So that'd be fantastic. For Sunny Effort Hotels, that is, you're probably going to be emailed around April 1st about that. And grassroots members will get to register first, get early registration. So if you are a grassroots member, that's great. If you want to become one prior to that time, then you'll have that privilege. And there will be a breakfast on Friday morning at the convention too for the grassroots members. The main thing that happened that was the biggest issue at the SRC committee meeting was um, an issue with the law of cabin Republicans wanting a booth and they also requested coalition status. We, we worked really hard on this and we heard from so many grassroots across the state of Texas. We received tons of emails and phone calls from all over Texas and the majority of what we were hearing was no, please don't support the law of Republicans for the booth or coalition status. In Senate District 4, we heard from, last I heard count, over 100. All of them were no's except for two people in all of SD4. So SD3 and SD4 committee members all voted no for that. We were joined with over two-thirds of the SRC committee members believing the same thing and feeling like that we needed to uphold the platform that the delegates set this last convention. Because they, they publicly said that they only agree to eight of the party principles. And so there's some issues there because we need to have people who support all of our party principles. And one thing I wanted, I did hand out a flyer that the preaching chairs got, and it's come along, and y'all can read some of that at home. But I did want to state this because a lot of people don't realize, I don't even think I realized, what all came out of the platform this last convention in 2018. Homosexual, homosexuality is a chosen behavior that's gone. It's no longer in the platform. Homosexuality is contrary to the truth of God that no longer is in there. Homosexuality should not, should, should not present it as an acceptable lifestyle that's gone. Family should be redefined to include homosexual couples. Family should, oh, sorry, family should not be redefined to include homosexual couples. That's also gone. And then um, there's some other things listed there. So I y'all want to read over that. And the reason I'm telling you about this is because we succeeded at this last meeting and we had people come, groups come and help us. Texas Values, Pastor Dave Welch, the Texas Conservative Grassroots Coalition, and Senator Bob Hall, and others. And there are many, many like just grassroots who came. But the reason I'm telling about this is because they're not going to give up. And it's going to be another battle at the convention. And we need to be girded and ready because we need to maintain our platform if we want traditional family values in there. So I would like for um, all of you to know that, become more informed, educate yourself, and be able to talk about this starting at your precinct conventions and on up through the conventions so that the delegates know what they believe. Okay, so I believe that that is all of my report, and um, thank you very much. Judy Parade has been your SREC uh, SD3 committee woman for eight years and for the first time in eight years uh, she missed the, the weekend meeting and she's actually taking my place at another meeting tonight as a treasurer of the Rotary Club so we're doing split duty. The only thing I want to do is just get up uh, and because the echo a lot of what Allison said but you know inundated with emails a few phone calls uh, the vast majority of them were against the proposal and it, uh, the final count on the SREC was 62 to 2 so it wasn't even close
Vacancy committee has already reported. Committee reports. If you are chairman of the committee and you have a report, come up here. You can present the report. Hello, Raquel Lewis, uh, chair of the marketing and PR committee. Um, we did not send out a newsletter in December because of the holiday and January just because there wasn't a lot going on after the holiday. But I have sent out a uh, request for content for a February newsletter that will go out before the end of the month. So if you have any news, any events, anything like that going on, uh, send those to me. We can get them included in the newsletter. We also sent out our first email notification of the calendar of events that we keep on the website. So that will go out on the first of every month. So you can click on the link and see what events are on the calendar for that month. Anybody can submit a request to put an event on the calendar. So we have um, the committee meetings, we have events for candidates, we have the uh, women's clubs meetings, things like that. So if you have something to submit, the link is also included in the email for that. Um, lastly, uh, tomorrow a brand new email will go out. It's a precinct chair quick tip that um, we're going to try and send out every couple weeks or so. Just one thing that's important to you as a precinct chair. So tomorrow the email will go out about uh, working the election. A couple weeks from now we'll be sending out an email about a precinct convention, so it'll have links to informative information about what to do about conducting a precinct convention. And with that said, I guess since I'm talking about it already, um, Allison, should I just but the, okay. Um, we are trying to get organized ahead of the election for the precinct conventions. So if you know that you plan to serve as the temporary chair for your precinct convention, if you could please sign up on the sign-in sheet, and I will circulate this starting on this side. This certainly isn't reserved just for precinct chairs. If, if you can't serve as a chair for your precinct convention, someone else can certainly do it. Um, so we just want to make sure that anybody that wants to serve as a precinct chair gets the materials that they need, that they're prepared, and they have all the information that they need to properly run that convention. So uh, I'll pass this around and um, just sign up if you're planning on doing that so we can get that kind of information ahead of time. Yes. Okay. So. True. Okay. So, if you are running for precinct chair <laughs> in your precinct and you are contested, that means you will be on the ballot. That also means that you cannot serve as election judge for your precinct. Uh, if you want to serve as election judge, find somebody else that's contested and switch precincts with them, and then you can work switching precincts. That also means that you're going to have some work to do to get to your precinct convention if it is held the same night as the election. So just keep that in mind. So um, there are lots of options for working the election, uh, it, whether or not you're contested. If you're running for precinct chair and you're not contested, you're not going to be on the ballot. So you can still work your own precinct as an election judge. So that's pretty much it. Anybody have any questions? Yes? For all the you clarify Anybody that is a re that votes in the primary in that specific precinct is eligible to serve as the temporary chair for their precinct convention. Yes, Paul. My understanding is the city precinct chair <coughs> is the temporary chair, and then when the meeting starts, the members there get to elect mm -hmm. a permanent chair. So the city chair yes. is the temporary chair. If yes, present. ideally. If present. Yes, if present. So if that uh, precinct chair is not present, then somebody else can take uh, ownership of that being the temporary chair. If they voted in the primary. If they voted in the primary, right. Whether or not that person is... That's correct, yes. yes. Whether or not you're contested in your primary election, you can still serve as a temporary chair for your precinct convention. Any other questions? Thank you very much.
Good evening. I'm Paul Rabolis, Chairman of the Precinct Chair Support Committee. And as you heard already, several of us will be addressing the questions of precinct conventions because they are very important. So each one has something to contribute to that. And this is a season, primary season, that I think of as a wonderful, weird, and hopefully polite season for Republicans. For us to have our say to see who is going to be on the ballot in the fall. The committee has held two meetings in January, uh, basically organizational type meetings, and we're going to have a few more and they will be put up on the calendar. I had to change uh, location where they were going to be, so I don't have that finalized over the dates yet, but we'll try to hope. The last ones were held one at noon and one at seven that evening, so that everybody could have an opportunity to attend. Only members of the committee will be able to vote on anything, but everybody's opinion is welcome. Okay, so do you have something that you think needs to be added to the precinct chair support efforts? Uh, please do. Uh, by the way, uh, the last meeting was meals were paid for by a certain candidate who I won't mention until after the election because uh, the position he's running for, that may not be appropriate, but uh, it did come out of my pocket. Okay. Uh, so, the 2020 election is to be, a, a primary election, is to be a combined election where you'll be working at the same place, same time with the other party. Uh, we are, will be co-judges. Not that usually we are the judge and then the other guys are the ultimate judge. This time there will be a judge and a, and a alternate from the Republicans and a judge and an alternate from the Democrats. So contact the alternate that you usually work with or call Election Central and find out who your alternate, excuse me, your co-judge will be and work with them to get your people out. If you have not already put together your team of clerks, you can call Election Central and they can provide you with a list of people who have served in that precinct previously. So you may not know all of them, but you can get that list and start assembling your group now. And if you end up with too many, last uh, <coughs> primary election, I think I was allowed five we ended up with eight people there that Same wanted to work. Way, man. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, you didn't hear me say this, but Election Central is very understanding if you end up with a little more than what they originally assigned. So if you need those people, uh, don't worry about it. Do the job. That's our first job is to do the job of seeing that everybody uh, gets uh, to vote and vote correctly. So okay, so we have so get your clerks ready and the support there. Uh, let's see what else did I hear. Okay, with the election coming up, get your training. Election Central does a superb job of training both the judges and the clerks. There is both online training, which I suggest everybody take. I got almost all of mine right. But also there is a mandatory in-person training at Election Central. So there, the uh, scheduling of that has already begun for judges. It begins uh, actually tomorrow. I'll, I'll be there at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning to get, get my training going and a little bit later. So go online to Election Central, click on training, and it will bring up the schedule for you to take your training and also see that all your potential clerks get their training. Okay. Once we hold the election, we have that precinct convention. Precinct conventions are a wonderful tool to build your precinct. Do not underrate the value of precinct conventions. Okay, start talking to people now as you're doing your block walking or other contacting the people. Uh, invite them to the precinct conventions. There's somebody, I won't mention who, but somebody who one year passed out uh, invitations to the precinct convention at the election, and Texas Election Central came down and slapped my hand. 
<laughs> but there's different ways you can do that. You're not allowed to do, the only thing you're allowed to do at the election is a pre-formatted poster that puts up that says there will be a precinct convention at this location at this time, period. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. I, I totally disagree with that, but the law is the law, and we are Republicans, so we follow the law. Let me start. Allison? Yes, I was just going to say that um, RPT has put out a notice of convention in February 2018. It was passed out at all the early voting sites and election day. And I, yes. if I recall correctly, they put your sticker on there that shows that you voted Republican. I've been trying to discuss it with Dr. Wally about having that in and um, at all the Susie Harvey says they'll make all the copies and they'll pass them out, have plenty of copies at all the sites. But um, anyway, I'm hoping we'll have that get that going. Because copies that announcing that, the, the precinct convention? Yeah, yeah, it's a form. Yes. And it's in Warby T for a period of, uh, and it says notice of convention. And so the different kinds have already done theirs, by the way. And so we want to do it too, because I thought yes. that really helped the turnout and the precinct convention. Absolutely. We, we have somebody here to raise his hand first, and then we'll get back to you. You had to have someone sit there and write down the voters who voted Republicans so that you would have a list when you went to your precinct chair convention. And I'm assuming we'll do that again. We should get a list, and there's two, two ways to handle that. They also can swear that they have not participated in the other party's activities to participate in the precinct convention. Julie? I was at election judge training on Monday. They are going to give us a list of those that have voted in the Republican primary. Also, they are going to give us the notice of precinct convention, a paper that we are to hand out, not verbally, written, that's a big deal, but that we will hand out on the primary election day. So, Montgomery County elections is on top of this. Terrific. I don't have to go to jail this time. No. <laughs> Clarification. You'll, you'll get it in your kit. Okay, we'll get a list of the early voters that voted right. in the Republican primary. Right. The voters that vote that day is the you'll election judge. You will get the poll list, the pink copy of the poll list with all those labels on it. It's not an alphabetical order, but that's how you check off while you're people credential them for your precinct. issues on that that we will decide a little later tonight so some of those okay. questions will be determined then by a vote of the body okay uh, also they talked about the packet that comes from the party also precinct chair support committee has put together a packet and con uh, those will be given to the area chairman so contact your area chairman and get a copy of that. They either can be emailed to you or in hard copy if that's what you prefer. But we have put those together and don't overlook the importance of using resolutions as a tool. Last precinct convention there was a young lady who showed up at my precinct who had never shown up before. And she had several resolutions she sh that she wanted, not all of which I favored. That's too bad. The body voted for them. Okay. You were one of them? Okay. Um, the body voted for them. We took them to the senatorial convention, and a majority 
of the resolutions that were passed, up, new resolutions that were passed up to the state convention were from a brand new person who had never shown up before. So our party is open to new ideas, whether the precinct chair agrees with them or not. One more question. Because I'm trying to get the area chairs involved to do their job. Yeah. 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 Frankly, frankly, that is my reason. If you do not get it, if you do not get it by the end of next week, email me or call me, and I'll be happy to send you one. Okay, but ask your area chair first. Right. Sure. Real quick, very important point. Yes, sir. You do not have to go to the precinct convention to be a delegate to the SD convention. You just have to tell your precinct chair you want to go and fill in that form. That you is correct. Have to be there that night. The precinct chair will fill out a list of who wants to go to the senatorial convention. They do not have to be present. So if you have somebody that, I can't make it. Or I don't like those kind of precinct conventions. Whatever. You know, put their name on the list. Okay? lined up that if 
We have to hold our precinct convention that night. I do not want to be running up to Conroe and back in five minutes and get you done. So I have select, I have constable deputies who are willing to volunteer to do that job. Now they have to be sworn in as election workers. There's a fee, you know, we pay to run that those votes up to election central. And that should go to them. Uh, but that's going to be up to the precinct chair. But that's another source that you have to get that done. I one, one year had to rely upon a retired FBI agent to do that. Just in there for the they tried to close it and said, keep in mind, the law said if somebody didn't want it, they like to close it. They have to put their own Thank you. Fred? Quick question for the new people. How does a current precinct chair take a list of voters that they might contact that would like to become incumbents in the election? You can go to Election Central and see who voted in past primaries. <coughs> That, that's your primary list, those who have voted Republican in the past. All you have to do is reach out to, to the Montgomery County Election Center you electronically and they'll send you that list. Yes, and they'll send it to you electronically. You send it, verify who you are. Now, phone numbers are a whole different general finish, as they say. Okay, so. Yes, that's another source the advantage you have to have information. It's very valuable to try. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to line up another class on advantage you because there's a number of us, including somebody up here, that uh, tried to work advantage you and uh, just never mastered it. It appears to be a very useful tool. Yeah, if there's any further questions, you can find me in the phone book, Paul Gabolas or paulgabolas at hotmail.com. I'm listed in the precinct chairs. Uh, be glad to answer any questions and be helped anybody we can. Thank you. I have one question. Inside our kit, and when we are judge, there's a list about the precinct convention later on. So if we're contested and we're not working it, how do we get that? Are going to get an email? Okay. So. Okay, never mind. I'll see you. Got it all covered now. We'll get that covered. And that kit you get includes a little uh, script, that's the word I'm looking for, a script. You can sit there and never have you done anything with precinct conventions or the Republican Party before and just follow that script, fill in this line, okay, and next we elected so-and-so as secretary, fill in that line, and it's very easy to follow. And it's a, so anybody that's new at this, do not be scared. It, I could do it the first time at all. Well, let's go. Do we still have to have the minutes and such yes. to the headquarters within five days? Yes. Is it five days, sir? Three. Yeah. Five or three? Uh, five. Yeah. Okay. Get that. Okay, a lot of what uh, we talked about here will be covered again in just a minute as we move on. Is there any other committee report? Okay. Please be brief. <laughs> I'm sorry, you just had a lot to cover. I'll, I'll try. Um, I'm here representing uh, Darcy Pollock for the Community Engagement um, Committee. We've asked, we've sent out information about the up and coming Go Texan Parade. Um, we've had only five people um, throughout the county that have shown any interest, six, I'm sorry, we had a new one last night, that showed any interest to be there. Um, Last year we put the parade together. Um, it was it turned out great. The problem was though that there were more Democrats out there than there were Republicans. I don't want that to happen again. We've sent the message out to all the Republican women's groups. We sent it out as far as I know to all the candidates, um, to all the elected officials, and we're still not getting anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. How would it be helpful to send an email to the Army Emails To what? Yes, yes, I don't have um, So one of the, th it's boots and hats this year is the theme, um, but one of the things that was brought up to me on the, on the way in here was, this is the anniversary for women having the right to vote. 
And so we're thinking right now about having women dress in white. The rest of us will be in red. But having women dress in white just the way they did back there in the, um, in the suffrage time. And it would be a great thing for, um, for the community um, as well. Um, candidates are allowed to be in the parade with us. We're not endorsing a candidate. Um, or an elected official, but if you want to be there, um, we'd love to have you in line with us in the parade or are walking with us and you were with us last year um, when we did it. Yes, sir. And so it was, um, we, had, we had a good turnout and, and a, a lot of people came together to get it done. Yes, sir. Bob, what is the date and time? February 22nd. Um, <laughs> I start at 6 o'clock that morning. <laughs> Um, trying to get the, the vehicles there, Ginger as well. Um, we'll have the we'll have the elephant float again, um, and of course we'll have the red, white, and blue, and uh, whatever else we can come up with. We tried to have um, a committee meeting, but with five of us, there wasn't much sense in doing it. And the other thing, I don't know if we're bringing this up or not, but those of us that are on the committee, um, we've pretty much financed it. Um, for the last two parades with uh, the Go Texan parade and with the 4th of July parade. And we have a lot of stuff. We're going to need more stuff, especially the candy and the flags, and it gets, it, it gets expensive. So anything that you can do to help. Um, and kids are welcome um, to, to walk with us. And we'll just we'll have another good time. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> now, a lot of what you talked about a while ago, we're going to cover uh, in the next item on the agenda, has to do with the primary election. Uh, and I have, and my assistant, have been working for a number of weeks on this. Uh, first of all, we have to have a place to hold election. And that goes to the elections office. They're the ones that arrange the county commissioners okay the sites. So the party really doesn't have anything to do with selecting the site for the election uh, in each precinct. You can, if you have a suggestion or you would like to change the location, then you need to talk to Susie Harvey in the elections office and she will give you a rundown on uh, everything that they've looked for uh, and it, it's, a, it's a job but I think they're pretty well set uh, right now. Now we've had a little bit of a discussion about election judges in previous meetings. If you're a precinct chairman and you're not contested or you're you do not serve on a board of some sort, then you should be holding an election. If for whatever reason you don't think you want to do it or you can't do it or whatever, then you should assist us in finding someone in your precinct. You know your precinct better than I and my assistant. So if you haven't had a phone call, you're going to get one. As I know many of you here have done it. And I have a great deal of pleasure to introduce the young woman who is a seat for Major Hall Company. Excuse me, Patty. Uh, and she has done a fabulous job. You have to understand that it is the duty of the county chairman to recommend election judges to the elections office, work with the elections office, they go to the commissioner's court, and the commissioner's court appoints the election judges. That's the system. Well, that's what we're working through right now. I want to introduce Patty Moore. Patty, please stand. I want to make sure I got these numbers right so she'll either scold me or maybe sock me if I get them wrong. But when she 
agreed to come and help me with this project. We had to have over 70 election judges. Seven, zero. Okay? She has been making phone calls. She's enlisted the help of different organizations. And she has a spreadsheet. And right now, Patty, how many do we like? About two. About two. Woo! Woo! Stand up again. <laughs> yeah. I will have to tell my former employer that they was called a drug company. <laughs> 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 they will enjoy that. <laughs> I did that on purpose. <laughs> this is a terrific job. We've gone when I became county chairman. In 1964, we had 18 voting green. 18, 1A. Now we have 100, as you know. So this is a, a real tough job. And this lady has done outstanding work. And not only with the election judges, but we talked about student clerks. Yeah. And it is legal for a high school students to work in the election. They have to go through a certain process. Their parents have to sign off on it and so forth. And so Patty's been working on that. Nice. And so far we have a, you call it a co-op? Can I add one thing? Um, we've got, right now we're starting with a small group as a pilot. You want to come up here? I know you don't, but no. they, they can hear you. But. <laughs> Um, it's a pilot program. We're calling our pilot co-op with the students. So we, something, an opportunity kind of landed in my lap and I took advantage of it because I thought it'd be great to get that next generation involved. And so we're pretty excited about the student clerk concept. We've got a number of judges that I've already contacted, Julie Fobel, uh, Linda Stuckey, um, a couple more. Um, and there's about 12 of them with 12 student clerks. And they're going to be pages or runners or clerks. They're going to clerk training and they're following all the regulations. Election Central has blessed it. We've got everybody's approval on all directions. And I think it's going to be a real good opportunity. And if it goes very smoothly and very well this year, then our hope is by November. And we're going to be positioned to have some more do it. And the fact that they get paid as well, they're a little excited about that. So um, we think it's a really good opportunity. So thank you for the support on that. Thank you. We're, 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 we're starting out with 12 students. Yes, sir. And this is, we're cooperating and we have great cooperation from Magnolia West High School. That's where these, these clerks will start from. So this is a, just the beginning and uh, I envision as each election goes by, we'll increase that number and maybe one of these days we'll have 50 or maybe more. But uh, these are excellent workers, and they'll do a great job. Now, anybody have any questions about the election? <laughs> yeah, Paul. Uh, Sir, I believe uh, a meeting or two ago, there was a primary advisory board or board on the primary elections, and they asked for four, five people be on that. Any, I volunteered to be one of those. Have we held any meetings? No, I hadn't felt it was necessary yet, but if we need to, we will, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Just to make sure I don't miss something. No, you haven't missed anything. Okay. So, just to summarize, the elections office, they pick the elections site, the polling location. Okay? We have nothing to do with that. We can suggest, or we can act or change and that sort of thing, but it will strictly be up to them and the commissioner's court uh, where the election is held. As far as the election judges, I describe the process, and I'll be approving these uh, people that uh, we've recruited, and they will go to the commissioner's court for approval. I think that's all, unless you have some 
questions about the primary election. You know we're operating under a joint primary, and Paul described them. Uh, we're operating essentially like we do early voting. And I can tell you the elections office is real happy uh, that we do that because it makes their job easier. It sure makes our job easier. And instead of having two sets of election clerks, we have one. And we're saving the taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars because and I'm not against the election workers getting a pay raise, but they did. They're getting $15 an hour now. No? Twelve. Tw oh, twelve. I'm sorry, I reduced you some. <laughs> I guess I was watching too much Democrats on television. The ladies get fifteen. All right. Okay. Yeah. And just a, a quick point of clarification yeah. on, on the issue on the precinct convention. You'll get a script. I'm fixing to go to that right now. But in the script, you you can announce that you have. Had prior notification, you enter amended, and you can vote on it individually or as a slate. But it is allowed to tell your precinct chair ahead of time, and it's in the script. Okay, we'll move quickly to the precinct conventions. Yes. Um, so, I'm a little confused about the, I think Paul mentioned the so Yes. Um, if there's a decision to make about. All election central, they will tell you. Yes, they will. So my question is, if we have two co-judges, so like this, not like this, who makes, who breaks the tie of the decision? Election central. I can't get on the phone. No, this is, this is, you're the, the election, I've, I've always been the election judge, and I've had to make decisions, right? And now if, I have, I mean, if, Okay. The great news is that the Democrat judge must do all of their paperwork this primary election. They, the Democrat judge does their SORs, their provisionals, any issue regarding a Democrat voter. The Republican judge handles the Republican. So it's not so much we're in charge and they're the unwilling. We are co. And then any issue that we can't resolve individually goes to election center. With regard to the cell phone that they give you, mine doesn't work. I'm in the old Montgomery Independent School District Administration it is vacant. It is empty. There is no Wi-Fi. Right now, the bathroom is still there. But we are permitted to use our personal cell phone when the election central phone cannot get through and does not work. I clarify that. And a question. You explain how it is now. Each side is supposed to do their own paperwork. Yes. What? Was it like before? Oh, no, um, but, no, another meeting. That's another meeting. Yeah. <laughs> have you, we did. We did. Marcus, have you been to the election school? Yes, I have. Okay, this year? Yep. Yeah. Okay. If you have a question about that, the election people want to solve it. Okay. Let's go quickly to the precinct convention. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about needing the delegate allocation list. And I understand that's the important of it. That's how many delegates your precinct can have to the SD convention. And everybody needs to know that. And in due time, that will take place. Uh, we have to wait a little bit because although your precinct may not be involved in this, we have about 10 precincts and we have to shovel around the diverse registered voter lists. And we have to wait until we get that from the election central before we know how that can be handled. 
And luckily, we have Mark Tarbull and Brian Crumby that are working on that, and we'll get that sorted out. If you're in a new precinct, or if you had a precinct where they split it up, it, it, it takes a little juggling of the numbers in order to get it fairly done. And it will take place, and you'll have that lift. If you are not in one of those, and you're not affected, and you want to know how many delegates now, you simply know that it's one delegate for every 25 votes cast for the governor in 2018. And you can get that online. You go to election site and click on elections, and you can get your precinct numbers that the governor, how many votes were cast for the governor. And then it's just a simple deal. It's either one for every 25 or a major portion thereof. If you have 12 votes left over, you don't get a major portion of the 25, then you get another delegate. Okay? If you have a question, call the headquarters and we'll solve it for you. Okay? Now, we have copies of all the stuff that you need to run your precinct convention at the headquarters. And we'll be happy to make copies of it for you or email it to you. But there will be a copy in the election supplies that the election people will have. And so if you are not holding the election, you all you need to do is go to the election judge and say, I want to pack it for the precinct convention and they'll give it to you and you'll have everything you need. And it includes another list of delegate allocation. Now, a lot of this takes, you may not think it does, but it takes a lot of work. And so there's a lot going on that you may not know about. So, we're busy people right now. Okay? Now, the conventions generally have been held at the polling location. And I'm sure maybe we're going to vote on that. If that's not agreeable with, with everybody here, you got a better suggestion, we'll be happy to listen to it. And we've always been convening the, the precinct conventions at 8 p.m. And that gives you an hour, if you're helping to be working in the election, that gives you an hour to try to get all your stuff done. Uh, and if you uh, uh, have workers, you will have, they, one of them can be designated to take the supplies back to the election central so that you don't have to leave and not be able to hold the convention. Well, yeah. Oh. Okay, now, is there any any reason for us not to hold the precinct convention at the polling location and to convene at 8 p.m.? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a motion regarding that. Okay, what's your motion? My motion is that we hold the precinct convention on the Saturday after the primary, which will be March 7th at 2 o'clock p.m. And uh, I would like to, if I get a second, I would like to speak on my reasons. Well, where, where are you planning to have it? Okay, so uh, it's been well, second. Seconded, right. So, I mean, really, the thing that we need to be working on and, and what I've been trying to think of is how can we get better participation in these precinct conventions? Because for most precincts, these are very few people will attend these, they're very low attendance. And so, in brainstorming and talking to a lot of other precinct chairs, how we can uh, get better participation in these. And, and one of the ideas that's been thrown around, what's kind of interesting, is I've talked to a lot of people that I, some people I don't usually agree with issues on that are in favor of this, and some people I do agree with issues on a lot who are not in favor of this, so it's been kind of unusual. but is to move it to a different day. Those of you who have been election judges, and I've been an election judge in my precinct, know firsthand how absolutely insanely hectic it is running the election, 
than having to scramble to get everything taken down and get everything packed away so you can send it back to Election Central. Uh, it's, it's a nightmare, and it's, it's so hectic. And uh, those of you who have been election judges know how hectic that is. Uh, those of you who are new, uh, just, just wait. Uh, you're, about to, you're about to find out. Um, the, the other thing, there's so much going on that night. There's a lot of events. There's a lot of watch parties. People that are involved with campaigns, you know, I think a lot of them don't come to these conventions because they're going to a watch party or another event. And so I think if we change the day to where it's not competing with so many other different events, we would probably get better participation. And then finally, if, if we're not rushing the process, if you're having it the night of the election, that leads to a lot of rushing. You can have it on a different day. You can focus on that. You can spend the time between election day and the convention working to get people turned out to this. And so, and, and just for people that may be working at a different precinct, it's really hard for them to, to get there. And, you know, for your two clerks that you're going to send off to Election Central, uh, they're going to miss out on the precinct convention. Maybe they want to be part of that. So, for, for all those reasons, now the one drawback I, I foresee to this, and I've noted it in an email today, is for a lot of the precincts, a lot of the precincts we probably will, like I know probably mine, will be able to have it at the same location. Some probably will have to be in a different location. And so something that's been suggested is this is something that the area chairs could take the initiative on. Uh, you know, Paul was talking about we need things for them to do. This is this is another thing that they could work on to take the initiative. And then also the precincts, precinct chairs in a different area. And, and really, I mean, the precinct convention can be anywhere. Um, but I, I really think with all the precinct chairs working on this, with the area chairs and, and coordinating with all the people in this room, that shouldn't be too hard to get that done. And logistically, if um, if we can't figure out how to get locations for a precinct convention logistically, uh, we have a lot bigger issues as a party. So with all those reasons, those are would be the reasons for, for changing it. That one four? Would That's that four, one yes four? sir. No, okay, I'm sorry. My question is, how does the party currently pay for its primary locations? And is this payment, as for instance our brother just said, does this payment include the use of the facility after the polls close? The primary fund pays for the election sign. Okay, so we've never had anybody come forward and say, "Look, you owe me owe more money." But we contract with the elections office to run the primary, and so they would bill us, uh, and in fact, and then we bill the state for anything extra. We would eventually probably have to pay some, but, but really we contract with the elections office and uh, they were frequently they would never bill us for, I've never received a bill from any election site for any, any of that sort of thing. And we could, so we'll have to work through that then, but I don't, I don't anticipate that. And, and the precinct chairs, there, there are plenty of free sites, I assume they would find a free site. I can understand some of the things that, that uh, Mr. Reed was talking about, but you're talking about having three or four or more places in the county to hold these elections. And when I looked at it before and you had to pay the rent on all these, the state like, does not pay us any rent for the precinct convention.
I believe it's called New Heaven. He's speaking for or against? Against. Itch. <laughs> How about that? Scott Baker, Precinct 23. Um, I, I, I know Greg about this earlier. I'm, I'm not adamantly opposed to this idea. I can understand the, the logic behind it, but at the same time, uh, I have several concerns, especially about the location. Um, uh, I can say that um, I, I've been doing this for several years, uh, and uh, my precinct convention has grown every year because I've made it a point to, to reach out to folks, and and, uh, and uh, several of the folks in my precinct know that it's going to be the night after the primary, and so they, 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 they set aside that time to make it. We're already there. I realize that there can be a scramble, but um, I, I never felt like it was too much of a scramble to get it done that night. If we're already there. The voters know where to go already, which can be a challenge, which can actually work against you if you're trying to do it on a different day. So we're trying to encourage people to come out. There could be a cost factor to this. If there's a way we can consolidate it and, and let people know, that's the other thing is we got to let people know. You got you have a captive audience at the polls that you've got a table right there you can put those sheets on to announce, hey, tonight, come back after you get off work, after you can, right here, but we're going to do the precinct convention. It's right there on a piece of paper, right in front of them, that you can make sure that they get in their hand, right, without announcing verbally, uh, obviously by the law. But there's a, there's a lot of benefits to doing it the night of. And my question really is, uh, is, is can we split the baby? Is there anything keeping us from saying that the ones that want to do it precinct night can do it that night? And the ones that don't can organize together and do it the following Saturday. Is there anything that's preventing that? I realize that's that. That's not the most. I, I, I realize it's a challenge, but I'm asking the question. And that could be, that could cause more confusion. I don't know. I'm just saying, if it, if it works better for you, if everybody says, hey, we hate that idea, Scott, and you guys vote on it, then I guess we'll do it that way. I, I'm, this is not a hill I'm going to die on. One <laughs> hill. Okay. Who's for it? Parliamentary board, actually. Hey, pardon? Parliamentary board. Uh, going off of what Scott said, that's actually, is there anything in the law that you know of that... Are you for or against? Um, it's a parliamentary inquiry, I'm stopping the question. Um, Mr. Baker made a good point. Is there anything in the law that prevents us from doing, kind of splitting up, like he said, if somebody wants to hold a different day or... Anything like that? I'm not sure. I don't, I, I doubt you. Did you yes. want to amend the motion? No, I, I was just, no, no just a question. Mr. Baker brought it up, and I wanted to see if there was anything in the law that would do it. Okay. 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 Okay get it over with and whoever can come can come and others then I'm sorry they can't then to pick up another day and, and have that done. And like what Paul was saying, they suggested when we went to training the other day that the, the Democrat return all of the you know the things to the um, if you were holding your Republican uh, convention, then you just let the Democrats return right. the things up to Because they, they hold their different time. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Or against. You don't need to hear your gallery. <laughs> I second that. I'm for, but in a mint fashion. Um, for all the SD3 people, our convention date is going to be March 21st at 8 a.m. at the uh, Lone Star Community Center in Montgomery. Um, secondly, if we move the date, can we, I, I want to know this question, this is a point of inquiry, and we probably need to have uh, Jay and the parliamentarian rule on this one. Um, if we move the date so we can, so we can serve as precinct, can we serve as precinct chairman? Okay, if we move the date, since it's not the night of the election, so if we move the date to this following Saturday, can we serve, the current chair, serve as precinct chair? So I'd like to hear a ruling on that. Yeah, the answer is yes. If you're elected by the 
by the precinct convention. Okay, but I'm talking in a precinct, uh, in a contested election. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. A few days later. Okay, so there's no there's no rule against that. Okay. Um, two things. I could be wrong about this, but it looks like uh, House Bill 2640 adopted September 1st, 2019 states that the only time this can be changed is if the rules are adopted by the state executive committee, that the convention may not be held earlier than 7 or later than 9 um, after the last. I can, I can send it to Daniel. Um, That's one section 174.022, right? That's Texas Election Code Section 174.022, right? Correct. Hang on. Let's just get this over with. You know, I love to call the question. Okay. But I am going to say two paragraphs here. The, the first paragraph you're not going to like. Okay. This is really, the reason why we hold these precinct conventions is to increase the participation of voters. If we rush it, I think we, we just get dwindling participation, we get the same players, we don't do anything really, we don't expand anything, and I don't think that's the purpose of this. If it's just an exercise and I want to get out of here, we're Republicans, we are not lazy people, okay, first off. So if we have to do it on a different day to get more participation, that's why I'm in favor of looking at this, okay. So Betty, you got a question? Okay, well, I'm done. So, uh, thanks. I have just, we've got, this is in the mail. There is an Eagle Forum, um, um, and, and it, this is a nonpartisan uh, deal, um, but. It ha this mailing has gone out. I'm sorry. Um, the mailing has gone out. It has the, the date and time. Um, the location is at your, um, for most of these, is at your um, election day, voting location. It's in the mail. Hundreds of people are getting this all over the county. And they're going to be there. And so <laughs> somebody's going to have to be there to tell them, well, sorry, it's not tonight. Um, also, in my precinct, my precinct is going to hold it at our election day voting location because I've gotten voter information to 750 homes. And um, we will be meeting that night at Shenandoah City <laughs> I have had... 30 people at my precinct caucus, um, and it's getting to be more and more. Um, my first precinct caucus was um, 1992. I've been to every precinct caucus since then um, in my precinct. And that this is the only place we've had it, it's the only time we've had it, and that's why I put this in our marketing. I just assumed we would do the same thing after Three decades. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Wally, Dr. I Wally, have I have a motion. I have a motion, Dr. Wally. I move that we table consideration of this motion. Thank you. Because the, the statute clearly provides, if I could talk a little bit about that motion, the statute provides that when, when the place selected for a convention has to have the same requirements for access by the elderly and persons with physical disabilities, 
this is not something we should rush into. We should look before we leave and we're too close. Let's not do this. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm saying it's a bad idea to do it this quickly and this soon without notice to the voters when they've it's been held the night of the convention for years and the code makes that pretty clear on their, what their requirements are. Well, I need a second. And, and Dr. Wallach, for, for that to pass, we need a, um, it needs a majority. It's not, yes sir, it's not amendable and not debatable, we just need a majority. Okay, now, a vote for is... A vote for would table this motion and would mean that we wouldn't change anything. Okay. A vote against it would mean that we would continue to debate whether we should change it. Oh, get that? Yes. A vote for, yes. we table it. A vote against means we continue the discussion. Everybody understand? Yes. Okay. We have a voice vote. Yes. All in favor? Four. Aye. Those opposed? No. Okay. Motion is carried. Okay. Were there any other questions about precinct convention? No. Good. FD3 and FD4 convention. Robert? FD3? Yeah, SD4, we have, um, if I may. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll yield the SD3 first. You're saying that convention sets the if you want to set it back an hour, I'm fine. Well, I'm, I'm thinking registration will be like six. Now. You want to do it that early? No. <laughs> what I'm saying is, if you're setting it for eight, then registration has to be at least an hour before. Okay, well then I, that's why I was flexible in that time. I, I would prefer we, we actually registered eight and start at nine. That would be better. Okay? I'm fine with that. I'm, and also, the last thing I want to say is I'm not going to play games with, you know, we have enough issues with unity in the party. I'm not going to play the who's on whose side stuff. If you want delegates, just show up. I mean, it's kind of like I'm a Methodist. You show up with a dish, you're a Methodist. I mean, that's the kind of way I treat things, okay? All right. So that's all I got to say. Bye. Uh, after all, uh, we met with the committee chairs for the SD4 convention, it'll be on the 21st at Grace Woodlands Church. Uh, registration will begin at 8, and then and the uh, convention will begin at 10 because of the issues with registration to give everyone time. Uh, Raquel Lewis is the nominations committee chair. Uh, Mark Frank is credentials committee chair. Brian Crum Crumby is the rules committee chair. George Hyde, resolutions committee chair. And uh, Sheila McKay is the con uh, convention arrangements chair with Bill Brenza. In technology, um, Jason Millsaps will be the parliamentarian. Anyways, um, and John Works is the treasurer. If you have any interest at all in serving on any of those committees, we had a sign up last time. Please let me know. Some of you have asked. Oh, Raquel has it. Uh, we, we, it's open to everybody. So please sign up. Uh, and then I have a, a motion, Dr. Wally, or excuse me, a point of inquiry. I have a point of inquiry now. It's done for SD4, and now I have a point of inquiry. Okay. The, the minutes state, and then we just need to correct this. This is, I, I want to know what the, the sense of the body is. The minutes that we just adopted at the beginning of this meeting stated that Gary Reynolds stepped down after making a statement last. I'm just, Gary, I'm just saying what it says. I want to know what the set that has to be, if it's, if it's incorrect, hang on, if it's incorrect, we need to amend something previously adopted, and there's a procedure for that. If the sense of the, the CEC, the KEC, is that Gary did set down, then it's correct. I don't, I'm not taking a position on that. I'm asking what the sense of the this body was at the end of last meeting. I remember, I remember it, Gary. Information. Gary, I'm not through. I'm not through. You first. Thank you. 
I, the, the rules provide, I'm just trying to go by the rules and make sure that our documents, our records accurately reflect what happens. That's all I'm doing. It says right now that you step down in the minutes that we adopted. If that's not true, we need to fix it. If it, it, it says resignations should be immediately accepted. If this body believed that Gary stepped down at the end of last meeting, then, then that's what we approved, and that's fine, and he's no longer precinct chair. If that's not what you all think happened, then we need to uh, amend something that was previously approved. That's my inquiry. So I guess my motion is, I guess I make a motion now, Dr. Wally, that we poll the CEC to see what the sense is, what their impression of what happened at the end of the last CEC meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, so there's, it's, you can amend something that's been previously adopted if an amendment is in order. The amendment, if that, if the CEC sense is that Gary did step down, and I remember Gary, I'm not taking a point on it, I'm not taking a position. If that's what our sense was that he stepped down, then these are correct, or then the, the minutes that we adopted are correct, and we don't need to change anything. But if it's not correct, we need to amend that. Mr. Chairman, can I be recognized for a motion? Uh, I move that we do amend that. I don't remember him saying that. So I, I move we strike that from the minutes. Second. Can we watch it on the video? Please? <laughs> <laughs> play it back. Play it back. I want to see the whole three hour meeting. Do you understand the motion? Do you understand the motion? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. The motion is to strike the part of the minutes that say that Mr. Reynolds sat down. Yes. It requires a two-thirds vote to amend something previously adopted. You understand the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wait a minute. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? I believe we got two thirds. <laughs> Even I can figure that out. <laughs> okay. Look at Tom and Karen's speech. It's all about the money. <laughs> Show me the money. You did. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, Tim. I wanted to make a actual resolution if we can get a, a man. Um, I'd like to commend Dale Inman and his job as a as, uh, school board uh, member and that uh, he supported uh, uh, Republican values. I'd like to uh, make that as a motion. I second it. And a resolution. Heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Thank you. Discussion? Anybody want to be far again? Call the motion. Call the question. Call the question. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion adopted. Yes, Scott. I just want y'all to know, I, I saw this on Facebook today, and uh, um, Al Shlieski, who's uh, been a member of this body for a long time, he's in the hospital with uh, pretty bad cancer right now, and he's in uh, his Memorial Herman Woodlands Hospital, room 6, 6212. If anybody wants to go visit him, I don't think he's got a lot of family in the area, and uh, I just I just want to encourage y'all, he has been he was a briefing chair for years and years, real hard worker, been around, and wanted everybody to know that. But, so, Mr. Chairman? Uh, r related to that, um, I, I had, I'm glad you brought that up. I had a short resolution. Um, I would like to pass thanking him for, for his service. Um, he, he is not doing well, and uh, I think it would mean a lot to him if we passed a resolution just saying thank you, and we were able to deliver that second. to him. Second. So, second. Here we go. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? No. Motion is nothing. 
I suggest, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, just because it's, we probably ought to read the resolution that we just all approved. It's too late now. I could have put anything in there. Uh, point of inquiry. I'd like to request that we read the resolution. I'm sure it says something great, but you probably want to hear it. It's short. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll read it. Um, I didn't put anything in there. Um, Whereas Al Shalesky has served as the Precinct 24 Chairman for the Montgomery County Republican Party for eight years, from 2004 to 2012, and whereas Al Shalesky has spent countless hours volunteering for the Republican Party, whereas Al Shalesky has continued to be involved in the party since he was the Precinct Chair and has been an integral part of the MCRP, therefore be it resolved that the MCRP recognizes Al Shalesky for all his years of dedicated service to the party and thanks him for all the countless efforts he has made to advance the conservative cause. Be it further resolved that the MCRP wishes Al Shalesky good health and healing and will keep him in our prayers. to make everybody aware of an event that's happening this uh, Saturday at Grace Woodlands Church. Uh, Dr. Jim Garlow, I don't know if you've heard of him, he's from Skyline Church and he's very active in the Christian community. Um, he is going to talk about what the Bible says about uh, cultural issues, clarity on cultural, uh, biblical clarity on cultural issues. And it's a free event, it's at uh, Woodlands, uh, Grace Woodlands Church. So here from Dr. Jim Garlow on what the Bible says about marriage, homosexuality, gender identity, social security, health and health care welfare, capitalism, socialism, school choice, parental authority, taxes, minimum wage, and judiciary, hate crime, social justice, racism, and the list goes on. He's going to discuss all those things on Saturday morning at Grace Woodlands Church from 9 o'clock until noon. I've got a bunch of flyers if you're interested. Paul Krause in Precinct 36, we will, um, I will be pushing a resolution about eminent domain. Um, in my little neighborhood just the other day, a lot of states went up on, uh, and it has to do with flooding. And I have a lot of information. I made only 20 copies, but if you, I would like to have some help for eminent domain uh, concerns coming up in Commissioner's Court very soon. Uh, as well as just what's going on in my neighborhood that appears to be in a domain on page 67 of a 140-page contract to Amani Engineering uh, on a project. And I have, um, like I said, i got about four page, four page, and as well as I'd like to give out my phone number. Uh, it's actually over here, um, and because um, I need some help with that. Uh, in a domain is, is uh, 